Yeah, so uh, hello everyone. As Daniel mentioned, I'm one of the CrossPlay maintainers. Uh, and you can connect with me in like, you know, various ways, uh, LinkedIn, GitHub or Slack for any questions and whatsoever. Uh, so we will first talk about ACK a little bit and then like how we integrated it uh, to like generate cross-plane AWS provider resources. Uh, and then we will show like, you know, the two pipelines and how they work together and then uh, take some questions. So I'll hand it over to Jay to talk about ACK. Thanks, Bivavak. Uh, hey, I'm Jay, Jay Pipes. Uh, I am a principal engineer on the EKS team at AWS. I'm mostly focused on open source contribution and the AWS controllers for Kubernetes project. Uh, so uh, let me give you a quick uh, overview of what ACK is all about. Uh, ACK is a set of custom Kubernetes controllers, one for each AWS service API that um, we, we define a custom resource for the resources within that API, say S3 bucket or an SNS topic, et cetera. And the ACK service controller manages resources uh, in that particular AWS API. the ACK service controllers, and I apologize, there's uh, some, <laughs> some gardening going on outside my window here. Uh, <laughs> so there, there's a set of code generators for the ACK service controllers themselves. And then um, the, the code generator within ACK is, is fairly extensible. And uh, we actually are able to generate some of the code that the cross-plane provider uh, uh, for AWS uses now. Uh, so move off, of, next slide. Yeah. So in the ACK code generation pipeline for ACK service controllers, we go through this multi-phased approach, right? So uh, some of you also may be asking like, well, why didn't you just use KubeBuilder for this? Um, well, in actuality, ACK's uh, code generator does use a lot of the same tools, the underlying tools in controller runtime and the controller tools for deep copy gen and, um, you know, those, those sort of low level code generation things. But, and those, those same tools are used in KubeBuilder. However, uh, for KubeBuilder, when you generate a particular controller or operator, um, what you get is essentially a stub of a controller implementation. And then you're responsible for going and, you know, um, fleshing out the whole implementation for the service controller. Now, in ACK land, uh, we, we, have to, um, we have to generate controllers for 170 plus AWS services. And uh, there's just no way that we were going to be able to hand build and hand code all of those uh, controller implementations. So in the ACK service controller generator, we actually generate the entire implementation of the service controller itself. And we do that by reading the models of the APIs, the AWS APIs, um, and then generating what I like to call like the SDK linkage, right? Um, it's, it's Go code that constructs the input and output shapes for the AWS SDK Go uh, interfaces for each of the AWS services. And uh, the code generation pipeline goes through this set of phases where we're generating different sets of these files uh, for an ACK uh, service controller. Now, if you want to move to the next slide, move off. What we did was we adapted the ACK code generator, or is a CLI tool called ACK Generate, so that instead of generating the ACK service controllers, we uh, have a set of templates that help to generate the cross-plane provider AWS uh, internal code. And this is where MoveOffic is going to take over uh, from me. Yeah, thanks, Jay. Uh, yeah, as, just as uh, Jay mentioned, uh, the, the ACK con uh, control is able to actually generate the full implementation. As you can see, there are like, you know, CRDs, role configuration files, and even hand charts that, are, that is not included in this uh, picture. So it's like a full deployable unit of 
controllers for every service. However, in cross-plane AWS provider, we actually reuse a lot of the stuff between the controllers and like it's all in one deployment. So where we needed the ACK generate command was actually the points, uh, we're actually like the points where we interact with AWS API, which are like one is API files, which is the translation of like fields from AWS SDK into Go structs, which will then be used for generation of the CRDs and then fulfill the crossplay runtime client. So basically like in the crossplay, we have the crossplay runtime external client uh, implementation. And then so every controller uh, actually only fulfills like uh, four main functions like create, observe, delete and update. So as long as these are in place and working, we, we get you a full controller. So we leverage that and used only like, you know, ACK generates uh, the templates for like, you know, fulfilling those uh, templates. And then like this uh, captures the, the first two steps. And then we use our own like, you know, uh, complementary code generation that we have for all providers and everywhere uh, to generate some helpers similar to deep copy. We have like managed and managed lists uh, as like, you know, many of the talk, uh, talks have gone over, uh, these are like necessary for standardization uh, across uh, managed resources. And then after this step, uh, a lot of the time like we have, we still have some manual code uh, to needed, uh, needs to be written. Uh, as Brian also pointed out, we have our own uh, reference implementation, uh, but this isn't like, you know, a generated part of the code pipeline so we have to implement those manually which is essentially like you know if you create a rds instance you would like to refer to the vpc that you would like it to exist in and so you can refer it by the name uh, of that vpc custom resource and then it will resolve so you need to uh, implement the, the references by using existing cross plane runtime uh, tools again and then finally uh we, we we have to write a example yaml and actually test it for end to end uh so this is like the the whole uh, integration we have right now with the ack generation pipeline and as a result uh right now we have i believe uh 21 crds generated and merged and released with the with the yesterday's release and i believe uh we have the uh, SageMaker APIs as well are coming uh, in ACK. And also we, I'm trying to like, you know, get it on the same level so that once ACK is able to generate a service, we get it like on the same day or maybe like a few days uh, uh, delay so that we, we get to full parity and then contribute back to ACK uh, for more templates to handle like, you know, new services that ACK doesn't support. And one thing uh, I want to also mention, as you can see, like some of those have ported uh, Mark alongside, which means, for example, we already had DynamoDB table resource, but we are actually choosing the code generation over uh, manual written controllers. But we're able to uh, also plug in the custom code that we have uh, for in the in the old implementation because. Uh, in many, in many, like many times, these APIs have their own, uh, you know, custom uh, custom hooks or a way of doing things. For example, some of them have only one update method, and others have like twenty update methods for every field. So these are like you know uh, the the things that you have to deal uh, in a custom way. Uh, so we keep them, and like you know, we have some. Uh, ways to uh, interject those uh, custom functions there. So uh, we can we can uh, actually show a quick demo of how this generation would work uh, right now if we did it for SageMaker. So this is uh, provider AWS. Uh, real quick. So this is the APIs that are available uh, and grouped 
by you know, group name. So I am going to just generate a new one, go run. So you see we are running the ACK generate with cross plane flag and marking the service and giving the provider directory. So once we run this command, it, what it will do is basically to go through the pipeline that we have shown here for the first two steps. And then uh, you will see that we have the SageMaker with all the uh, types that are like, you know, needed for CRD generation. So this truck and it's all kubebuilder as Jay pointed out, ACK actually does use like kubebuilder for a lot of stuff, for a lot of low level stuff. And then for the next, uh, and yes, we have also the controller implementation itself. For example, here, as I mentioned, we have like uh, five actually methods that needs to be implemented for a full controller. These are the ones, and then like it is fulfilled by, uh, it's generated by ACK. And now we will run the, our own complementary code generation. And this will actually fail because we have not uh, added the references here. But like after this uh, goes through, we will essentially be in the place where we just like write the custom functions if needed in the in the forms of hooks uh, here. So you can like you know inject custom code here by writing it like you know exceptions and like post create pre update and stuff. So you can manually interject any. Uh, weird cases as you'd like to. And after and I, this is- I think it's important to point out, Mavafik, that as yeah. changes, as, as the AWS APIs evolve and change and get new you know, additions and new API resources, those, um, those API models change and get pushed out to the AWS SDK Go mm -hmm. uh, source repository. And then the ACK generate command can bring in the new version of those API models, and we can just regenerate the controllers, or in you know the case of Crossplane, the provider AWS SDK linkage, and we don't have to like manually mm -hmm. you know hand build all that stuff over and over again. And that's really the the benefit of the the code generation process here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I agree. And and here, as you can see, like we uh, also like ACK does that. We clearly separate the generated files from like you know. The hooks so we have the conversions here once a new version is has come up all these functions are like uh, updated with the new uh, structs and conversion functions and all that stuff uh, so yeah right now we are uh, we are proceeding with uh, expanding the coverage to get to get to you know to an equal state with the ACK we have our own manually written controllers a bunch of them and we are, we're adding the ones that are generated by ACK. And once we get to full coverage, we will have like, you know, uh, more templates in ACK to handle uh, different cases of, you know, code generation because not all AWS APIs are like behave, sa behave the same way. So we have like you know, a bunch of templates in ACK and we will be going through, you know, uh, improving them. <laughs>